for, for this day. Let's start with prayer. Heavenly Father, we just come before your throne this morning. We thank you for who you are, Father. We thank you for such a powerful, impactful, inspirational week. We thank you that your, how your spirit has been with us, teaching us how to conquer, how to overcome, how to endure, Father God, and not allow shame to overtake us, but us to overcome it. And so we thank you as we continue today that you will be the voice, you will be the voice flowing through this vessel, these lips of clay. And we ask that you speak to each and every one of your daughters, your sons, and those listening. Father, meet them right where they are, Lord. Meet them right in their circumstance and show them who you are in that place. In Jesus' name, amen. We do our mindset renewal work from Dr. Caroline Leaf's book, Switch on your brain every day, 365 readings for peak happiness, thinking, and health. And we are on day 71. The scripture that she uses for this day is Romans 8, 38 through 39. I am persuaded, you see, that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor the present, nor the future, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in King Jesus, our Lord. Her brainy tip is we are wired for love. We are designed to act and react, act and react in love. And her brief teaching is this. We are wired to think, speak and act in love. Nothing can separate us from the love that forms the core of our existence. God's love, unless we choose to reject his love. When we get an insight into his love, we allow God's love to rule our lives, renewing our minds on a daily basis. And then we reflect this beautiful love into the world. We can bring the culture of heaven to earth participating in King Jesus restoration project for the whole of creation. We can be victorious in our efforts to change ourselves, our communities and our world for the better. All of this starts with understanding what this love feels like. And we can do this by thinking about our loved ones and how they make us feel, watching a beautiful movie, playing with our pets, having a deep conversation with a close friend, watching the wind wrestle, rustle through the trees on a beautiful day, or helping someone in need. If we are faithful with the small everyday things, we will experience God's love in every area of our lives. We will experience the glory of God in the now moments of our life. We will see how God never leaves us, how his love is ever present, unconditional and enduring. Amen. Um, this week is a powerful week, especially yesterday. The Holy Spirit was so thick on this room yesterday. I admonish you to go definitely listen to yesterday. And so I'm going to just be building upon the key principles and concepts Coach Kim was teaching us Monday and Tuesday, and we're just going to continue on this journey and have some fun. One of the things Coach Kim said yesterday was that the cross is needful. Shame is optional. The cross is needful. Shame is optional. Coming from Hebrews 12, where um, Paul was saying how Jesus endured the cross, right? Joy, he tapped into that feeling of joy and he endured the cross. The cross was needful, but the shame, the humiliation that he felt on that cross was optional. And so we're gonna kind of preference our teaching around this, what she said yesterday. Going back to Hebrews 12, 2, we're going to tap into these three words, endure, conquer, now. 
Endure, conquer now. Hebrews 12, 2 says, Jesus endured the agony of the cross and conquered its humiliation, its shame, and now sits exalted at the right hand of the throne of God. So at one point, his now moment was that cross. But because he endured, he conquered. And his now moment is at the right hand of the throne of God. Two different now moments, but he needed the one to get to the other. Endure in Merriam-Webster means to remain firm under suffering without yielding. So going through something, experiencing something, and you remain firm because you understand where God is bringing you, you understand where God is taking you, so you don't yield to the suffering that you're under. Conquer means to overcome opposition. One of the definitions of Merriam-Webster, which I loved, to overcome opposition by mental power. To overcome opposition by mental power. And we understand in this room that our feelings are attached to a thought. So if Jesus um, had joy, right? Obviously he was thinking about something to experience that joy, to experience the feeling of joy. He was looking towards the purpose and reason why he came here to begin with, right? This kingdom that God said he was going to give him. We as citizens are a part of this kingdom. And Jesus knew he had to go to the cross to reconcile us with God before we are able to be citizens of this kingdom, before he was able to be king of this kingdom. So his focal point was on that now moment, not the now moment he was in, right? And because his focal point was on that now moment versus the now moment he was in, he stayed firm. He remained firm under that suffering of the cross, the agony of the cross, without yielding, without, he had all the power on this side of heaven and in heaven. He could have easily said or utilized that power. He could have easily yielded to the agony of the cross and made a decision or a choice that would have sabotaged or not allowed the full, um, the fullness of it to come, right? And so think about it for us. We're in these assignments, we're in the things that God has called us to, we're in these agonizing situations, these painful situations. But our focal point is not on the now moment that God is trying to bring us to by way of this cross, by way of this, 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 what we deem as suffering or pain, right? Our focal point a lot of times is on the now moment that we're in. It's on us being up at that cross, looking down, seeing who's looking at us, seeing the situation that we're in, who's laughing, who's talking, what's going on, right? And because of that, we're not able to conquer. We're still hanging in that same place. We're still on that cross. We're still in that painful moment or that experience because we're yielding to that now moment and the pain in that now moment that we're experiencing. And so at one point, Jesus's now moment, his present moment was that cross. And at, and at right now, his now moment is at the right hand of the throne of God. So if we think about it as a bridge, he had to conquer that shame. He had to conquer that humiliation. And this is a blueprint for all of us. None of us are going to cross over, or I put it this way. 
when we look at some of Paul's writings and the way he introduces himself, right? He says servant, and then he states his leadership position, which is apostle, right? I am a servant or, you know, I was a servant first and now I am a, an apostle, right? That is a blueprint to what God is bringing us through in this kingdom. There is a there is one point where we're a servant, we're a follower, just as the disciples, they were, they were a servant to Jesus. They were a follower of Christ training. But then there became a moment where what God gifted them for, where what God um, destined them for fully came upon them, right? Whether it was apostleship, whether it was um, teachers, as it says some, prof prophets, right? Whether it's business, whatever your assignment is, that leadership position, that leadership role, there's a moment in time that that, that now moment is going to come up in heaven. And God is, is going to quicken your spirit, right? He's going to lead you into some areas and into some things to bring that forth in your life. But the part about that is that there's a bridge to get there. And this bridge is the shame. It is this humiliation. It is this, this, this moment. Not that God is bringing shame and humili humiliation on us, but there's a moment where we're going to have to go through something that tests our allegiance to him, that says, you have to make a choice. Are you gonna accept my love and walk that way? Or are you gonna reject my love and yield to what you're experiencing that's needful to get to the now moment that's come before me in heaven, right? This leadership role, this assignment, this next level place. And so Dr. Leaf says in this day 71, we can be victorious in our efforts to change ourselves. When we get insight into God's love and choose it. So we're in one place, we're at this cross, we're at this moment, we're going through this, it, this thing, but God has destined us to, to be here, right? This, this other now moment. And we can be victorious in our efforts to change ourselves, right? We're going from glory to glory. We're going from this place. That cross is, is glory, right? We look at it as something um, despiseful and shameful because it's a moment of vulnerability. It's a moment where we feel naked, where we feel stripped, where we feel like exposed, right? And we look at it and we despise that season. We despise that era of our lives, right? But really it's, that's still glory. That's still God's glory. He brought us, he led us there to bring us to a higher place in glory. Glory to glory, faith to faith, right? And so we're, we're able to change ourselves and be victorious in that. When we have insight into God's love and we choose versus reject it. We surrender ourselves, we submit ourselves. We say, okay, Father, I see that you're not here to harm me. I see that you're here to bring me from glory to glory. And I choose to accept that. And I choose to go through my now moment, whatever that may be, to get to this next now moment. Because I know that your plan for me is to prosper me. It is to advance me. So if, I'm, if you're trying to move me from this moment to this moment, I know that I'm only going higher. I know that I'm only going to a higher place. Hebrews 12, 1. For the path has already been marked out before us. God has appointed a destiny for each of us that we are to give ourselves fully to reach. Some of us don't reach that path marked out for us. Some of us don't reach that promised place. We look at the children of Israel, the first generation. They never fully reached the path God marked out for them. Why? Because they were too focused on their now, where they were now, their cross moment. Their cross moment 
was going in to take possession. But they were looking at what was in there. They were looking down on themselves. They were looking at what was over there, how the, it was giants and how the people were bigger than them, stronger than them, etc. That they, they lost focus of who God was, what God said, and what God wanted to do in their lives, where God was bringing them, their next level, their next now level moment. God wasn't telling them to go in there and, and, and endure that and conquer that shame and humiliation. Of course it's shameful, of course it's humiliating to show up at a place <laughs> with people that look bigger than you, that look stronger than you, that look like there's more of them or they have more powerful weapons or whatever. Think about what that feels like. Go to moments in your life where God has told you to show up and do something. And you're like, what? Like, who am I? Like, you want me to do what, Lord? What? Think about what that feels like. That's a vulnerable moment between you and the Father. And he's displaying it for the world. And that's what makes it shameful and that's what makes it humiliating. Right. Because it's like. You want me to step into this place, I feel weak, right? I feel like I'm not enough. I feel like I'm not prepared or I'm not whatever our excuses are. Right. The whole time God's prepared us, the whole time he brought them through the, the wilderness, he showed them all this and all that. He showed them where the power comes from but they still went to that space inside because it's natural. As Coach Kim said yesterday, it accompanies us, right? But we have the ability to conquer that when we stand firm and not yield to it. When we choose God's love over the now moment and what we see, it feels like he's left us, right? I'm, like Jesus said, why have you forsaken me on the cross? Because it feels, it's like, why would you ask me to do this, Father? <laughs> it makes no sense. But that's where his power becomes strong. Even though we may be weak in the flesh and in the natural sense, his power is on display. And he's choosing us as his vessels to display that power through. And so Hebrews 12, 2 says, Jesus's heart was focused on the joy of knowing you, me, us, humanity would be his. Of knowing that he was going to be king of a kingdom that we are citizens of. So that's where his heart was focused. That's where his eyes were set. That's where his mind was set while he was in agony, while he was in that place. We think about the children of Israel, right? Their minds should have been set on the fact that, that they knew God was bringing them to take possession of a land flowing with milk and honey. Think about David, where was his eyes fixed? They weren't, his eyes weren't fixed on Goliath. They was fixed on the reward he knew he was going to get if he conquered or overcame Goliath, right? God marked him as king. That was his destiny. But he had to go to this cross. He had to go to this place. Imagine the Bible talks about how small David was, how he was young, how he was but a boy facing this big eight, what, eight, 10 foot giant in front of all of these people talking about him, laughing. That's humiliating, that's shameful. That's like, ah, right? <laughs> he was able to conquer that because he endured, he stayed firm on, on where God was bringing him. That next level now moment, not on where he was. And so Ke Coach Kim yesterday, she said, where I am is not as important as where my eyes are fixed. Where I am is not as important as where my eyes are fixed. This cross, this, this, 
this moment of, of, of shame and humiliation and all that we feel. Our eyes should not be fixed on that. Our eyes should be fixed on what God has marked us for, our destiny. This cross moment only comes up when it's time to enter the thing God has promised you. This cross moment only comes up when it's time to enter the thing that God has promised you. And so many of us are in a season and in a place, either you're at this cross place now, or it's coming. Cause we know being in this room, right? God is taking us together as a unit places. That's why it's important to know who your leadership is and who you're following right? Because leaders are going places. God, God, God has given them a blueprint. Think about Joshua. God didn't give the whole camp the blueprint of the land and who was going to possess what and who was going where. God gave that to Joshua as the leader, as the one bringing them, right? So it's important to understand who you're following and who you're allowing to lead you because they're going to some place. And we know that We've been here for three years and we saw, right, how God has taken us all someplace and he's bringing us places. So this is no different. This is, this is, the Holy Spirit is saying this is prophetic in a sense because, again, some people are already at this cross moment and some people it's coming, it's trickling in now, right? If you're, if you're been underneath of Coach Kim's leadership and, and allowing her to lead you and teach you, she's going someplace. God is elevating her from glory to glory. And with that, he's also elevating us. And so this is so important because your cross moment is going to arrive if it has not already. And this cross moment comes when it's time to enter the very thing God has promised you. It's a moment where you're bare. And you're before all for God to display his power. It's a moment where you look crazy, <laughs> right? You look crazy. It's like, God, why would you have me here? But it's a moment that God is saying, make a choice to accept my love. I've given you insight through that wilderness experience. I've showed you who I was. I've showed you what I've wanted, what I can do. Now you're in a moment where you have to make a choice. Are you going to choose my love or reject it? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You said yes to the assignment before you knew the cross you would have to endure. We all said yes to the assignment before we knew the cross we had to endure. If you knew the cross you had to endure, you probably would not have said yes. I would not have said yes. <laughs> Woo! Right? If most of you who know me, right, my a part of my assignment is wealth. Teaching his children how to build wealth from the inside out using his scripture. Everybody's blueprint is different. Everything, every way that God brings people is different. So you might Find somebody else whose assignment is wealth might be how to um, show God's children how to build wealth through real estate, et cetera, right? That's why it's important to know the voice of God, your season, and who's leading you. Because you may need what I'm offering first before you get to that place. And that's why there's room for all of us. And that's why, you know, we can't get up. We can't look at what God, our assignment as like, well, God, there's 55,000 people over there in that industry because each of us, he's given each of us our own individual blueprint, right? And so my a part of my assignment is to teach his children wealth from the inside out, one scripture at a time, building wealth through the scriptures. But if I knew what I had to endure and go through in that wilderness moment, 
I would I would have said no. More, I hands down. Right. And as I said, there's there are going to be testimonies coming, and God has released me to talk about a piece of it today. What time is it? Forty three, six forty three. Um. Okay. Holy Spirit, help me to say it in a in a way that's fast. So. December, what was it? December 16th? No, December. It was like December 20 something, 2016. I got laid off from my corporate job. I was a, a public accountant, a public auditor. Um, and I was laid off. I'm going to make it brief. Like I said, he's, he's releasing me to share more of the testimony, right? So I just wanted to, he just wanted me to share this piece though. So I was laid off from public accounting. I think it was eight years this December that passed. And that began my wilderness experience with him. Everyone goes through uh, Egypt, wilderness, Canaan, right? So that began my wilderness experience with him where he wanted to teach me how to be led by him, how to depend on him how to say yes to him, the, the insight of his love. That's what he's teaching us in that moment, that wilderness moment, right? So during this wilderness moment, even though I got laid off, I still have bills. Like I said a couple times in the room, I just brought a house the year before. So all this, the bills are still the same right fast forward so during the midst of me getting laid off he birthed seed time wealth there was a i began to operate in that there was a a woman young lady who's doing a conference down in tennessee she found me god led her to find me she asked me to come speak fly in and speak at her conference now that's pivotal for me because at that time, you would have not caught, catch me going live, speaking in public, doing any of those things because I had some stuff, you know, some some built up thoughts and all those things that I had to work on and work through process, right? So right at that moment, right, God just threw me into it, right? He's like, all right, we're gonna start processing. That's also what happens in the wilderness. A lot of times we're stripped of things, we're pruned of things, we're processing things. It's very important to not despise that season. And so I said yes, even though I'm freaking out inside, right? I went down preparing for the for the class, the message and all that stuff. And as I'm preparing what I had to, to teach, God said, that's what I want you to teach my children. And that's where Seed Time Wealth was kind of birthed, like the vision for it, right? And so about three years, I went back and forth because I had some stuff to process from my childhood and some traumas and some things about public speaking and all those things, right? So I'm going back and forth with this, this business idea, not making business income, obviously, because I haven't really, I've, I've made some sales, right? But I haven't really fully launched it out. I haven't fully immersed myself, stepped into it. And so... Um, so that was like three years, right? I, God did allow me to do like a little part-time job, but when it came to going back to corporate, I couldn't do it. He wouldn't, I wouldn't get hired. I wouldn't get interviews, all of that stuff. Right. Because he didn't want dependence on that. He wanted me to, he was trying to train me how to depend on him. And that's what happens in the wilderness season. And so what you're used to it, sometimes it feels like it's hard to go back or like why why am i not being accepted or or whatever right because you're, we're not supposed to be going back we're supposed to be going forward and in going forward we're depending on him so that was like the first three years of it ended up meeting coach kim she helped me process through a lot of stuff work on that that trauma and all that stuff got over that began to slowly show up and be able to do certain things and speak and all that stuff right so as time goes on now god's like okay he's, he's pushing me hey go out step out step out and i'm like i couldn't right i couldn't step out 
because my eyes were so fixed on my now moment. The mortgage company is calling. Hey, mortgage is due, right? Now, during the process of that, there were several different programs and things that happened that I was able to tap into. And so, but for me, it was shameful. It was humiliating. It was embarrassing because I'm thinking on their end, they're like, what's up? Like, you're like, how come you're not working, right? How come you're an able bodied person, but you're not out there working? And a part of that came because I knew that I was supposed to be stepping out doing this business, but I was so focused on the fact that the mortgage is due, this is due, how are we gonna eat? I have three kids, like all of these things, right? And so this is going on five, six, year seven. And so, like I said, there was a couple programs that I was able to tap into. Now, I get to this cross moment. The programs run out. It's just me and God. I know that I haven't gotten the business to a place where um, I'm able to, like they, like when they enter Canaan, right? They were able to be sustained, right? So I know that I'm, I'm not in that place yet. So I'm like, ah, <laughs> gotta face the mortgage company again. <sighs> so for like, eight months i knew that was coming up and i was so focused on facing this mortgage company what are they going to say what are they going to think so i'm filling out job applications trying to get a corporate job trying to go back right because my profession i could easily make over well over six figures i could be fine right so that's security that's safety that's like okay let me just hop back over here real quick do this, get everything straight, and then God, I'll come do what you want me to do. It don't work like that, right? So I had this cross moment where I'm facing them. I'm humiliated. I'm, I feel vulnerable. I feel naked. I feel stripped because it's like you, you're supposed to, like this has been going on eight years now. The whole eight years, you haven't been in a place where you're able to pay this, right? It's been, it's been paid though, because God is good. <laughs> right but you keep calling us saying this that and the third that's humiliating that's shameful that's embarrassing and this last the last time that it happened there's no more programs like i said the programs ran out and god is like and i'm like god all right do i go back and get a job do i just rectify you know whatever and just work this on the side like what do i do I'm not hearing from him, right? I'm like, God, what do I do? What do I do? And he says to me, he's like, you make a choice. You can go back if you want, right? I'm not going to stop you. Or you can focus on what I've been telling you to focus on this last eight years. Focus on me, depend on me, and let's keep moving forward so you can enter the place that I have for you, the place that I have marked for you. Make a long story short, I mean, I filled out like 100 applications, kept going back and forth, getting interviews, because prior to this, I wouldn't get interviews, I wouldn't get hired. Now I'm getting interviews. So I'm like, okay, okay, all right, I'm gonna go, you know, I'm gonna go this route. Had to call people and say, hey, I can't come to the interview, had to do that like 20 times. That was embarrassing like going through the motion of it back and forth, back and forth, wavering, right? Wavering in faith, back and forth, back and forth. And I'm like, and when he said that, he said, you make a choice. Are you gonna follow me? Or are you gonna follow your heart? Are you gonna follow what you see? And the Bible talks about how it's foolish when we follow our hearts and we follow what we see, right? Are you gonna reject my love? Are you gonna reject where I'm trying to bring you? Or are you going to follow me? And so I had to make a decision. I had to choose. I did, I chose him, I chose his love. I said, okay, I backed away. I, I didn't go on the job site again, right? Looking for interviews and stuff. And I said, okay. He said, all right, right? You already know the blueprint, my daughter. You already know what to do. Like get in my word, meditate. 
So I had to get in his word, meditate on trusting him, meditate on different things to build my faith, to be able to trust him, to be able to believe that he is who he says he is and he's going to do what he said he was going to do. That's what sustains us, right? That's why it hurts God when, and it angers him, right? When the children of Israel went against his words because he's like, I've given you insight into my love. I've given you insight into who I am and what I desire to do for you. But you keep rejecting me. You keep following your heart. You keep following your way. You keep following what your eyes see. When I'm trying to get you to a different level of glory. I'm trying to get you to a different level of a now moment. This cross that you're in, this thing that you're in is temporary. I didn't, I didn't lead you here to keep you here forever. I led you here to make a choice, to show your allegiance to me, to show that you understand that you're depending on me because when you get into this promised place, you're gonna have to deal with certain things and certain people that allegiance is not towards me. And at any moment they can influence you to make the same choice. And so I want you to, to, to choose, it's a test, right? Where you are, where, do, where is your heart? Where's the foundation? So that when you enter this place, you're not caught, caught off guard. You're not, not able to follow me. There's gonna be areas and things in this place where you have to depend on me. They had to depend on God to, to overcome what was in that territory see we look at it as earthly but it's both spiritual and earthly in that territory that god is getting you to there's both spiritual things and earthly things that we have to overcome but we can't do it in our own power our own strength and our own flesh we need the power of god we need to depend on him to know what to do they needed to understand, okay, we have to shout first. We have to do this next. We have to do that next. That's the only way they overcame every that territory. But if they weren't in complete dependence on him, they were not able going to be able to do that. So I'm gonna kind of, I had more stuff to say, but I think the Holy Spirit said what he had to say, right? Either we're in a cross moment or we're coming to a cross moment. And we have to make a choice to depend on God, to trust God, to accept his love in order to see the promised thing he has for us. It's not a matter of God not wanting us to have it. God's not here with us. God does it in all that. We work through all that at the beginning of the wilderness. <clears throat> I hear the Holy Spirit saying that was all worked out before. Don't bring that into this space. This space is about trust and belief. Do you trust God? Do you believe God? And if you do make a choice, no matter how crazy you look, no matter how crazy it is, no matter how crazy it feels, no matter what he's asking you to do, no matter what people are saying, how people are watching, because at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, you're gonna emerge inside the place that God has promised you. So all of that is irrelevant. That's just chatter. That's just things that the enemy uses to try to keep us stuck so that we don't move forward, so that we don't choose God. And so let's get into our activation 
we like to spend two minutes with the Holy Spirit. And in this two minutes, I really want you to ask Heavenly Father, what your cross moment is right now or or what's what's going to come right what assignment are you in you should know that by now right and where are you not choosing him what are you up against in this very hour that's that you're not choosing him when i kept going back on indeed.com looking for jobs i was not choosing god i was rejecting him i was saying god your way does it make sense? Your way is, is not even worthy of me to look at. It's not even worthy of me to walk in. It's crazy. You're crazy. <laughs> you want me to stand in front of these people and say all the, like, I'm not doing that. That's embarrassing, right? So because of that, that shame and that humiliation and that embarrassment, I'm like, I'm going to reject what God is saying. And I'm going to go find my own way. What are you doing in your now moment that's causing you to reject God's way? Because you don't want to be vulnerable in displaying his power and his glory. So ask the Holy Spirit that as we spend our two minutes with the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Now that you understand or are aware of what's causing you to reject Heavenly Father, I want you to make a choice to trust him. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He will never drop you. And that's one of the things that he kept saying to me. I will not drop you. Because the whole time, that was one of my thoughts, like, God, you're going to drop me, right? I'm going to be on the streets with these kids, like, <laughs> and he said, I will not drop you and when he said that to me i felt it deep in my spirit and that's honestly what caused me to turn back to him because i began to look over the course of my life 
in everything that I've been through and everything that I've been in. And even the entire eight years of this experience, God did not drop me. Out of the eight years that I've been in the house that I was in or that I'm in, I probably paid my mortgage one year. The other seven years, God paid my mortgage. Variety of different ways, variety of different avenues. I didn't have to do anything but trust him. So you're calling me to go higher and to elevate. And it's almost like the children of Israel, like, I can't trust you. I can't go into this promised land because of what I think I'm seeing when you, this whole entire time you've done it, right? And he said, I will not drop you. As you enter into your promised place, I will not drop you. It's okay to let go. It's okay to release and rest in me. And that was my transition moment where I said, okay, God, Even though I see what I see, and I know what I know, I'm going to trust you. I'm not going to look at what I see. I'm going to look at you. Because you've done it before and you can do it again. So your activation is to trust him. Make the choice to trust him. And the day, I kid you not, that I said, God, my heart said, I'm going to trust you. I had some bills due. I had some stuff going on literally three days after I, I said that. God made an unexpected way. Something happened where money was deposited into my account that was whew, low end five figure amount, right? Wasn't expected from, from the person that gave it to me. And I was able to do some things that I needed to do, right? But that was after I let go and I trusted God and I said, I'm going to trust you. God showed me, I told you, I'm not going to drop you. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Go do the thing I told you to do. Keep going. Enter that promised place. Keep going. You got over the hardest part of this assignment. You endured that cross. You conquered that shame. Keep going. Because I will not drop you. That's for somebody this morning. Keep going. I will not drop you. He's looking for our heart, guys, to surrender and to release everything that's within it and say, Father, I trust you. You alone will do this thing for me. You alone will bring me to my promised place. You alone. No job, no money, no nothing is going to bring me to the place that he has called me to be. No person can bring me there. Neither can they deny me access. Neither can they stop the plan that he has marked for my life, your life. Trust him. Let's get into our closing comments.